Hey guys, this is EC Service Tech. So I had some questions on just when you walk up to a unit, how do you know if you need to check it in subcooling or if you have to check it in superheat? And I'm gonna explain how. All right, we've taken the evaporator coil cover off here to show you this piston chamber. All right, it's a piston or an orifice chamber. Normally this is located on the outside so you don't have to take the cover off in order to see it. All right, if you do have this at your evaporator coil, then you know you have to charge in superheat with the blue gauge all right, with the temp probe on the suction line. Because inside here, there is a piston, all right? It's a piston or an orifice, whatever you would like to call it. All right, if you find a thermostatic expansion valve inside TXV instead of a piston or orifice chamber, okay, then you're gonna have to check the refrigerant charge in subcoing instead, all right? Uh, to check the charge in subcoin, you would actually be reading off of the red gauge, which is the high side gauge with your temp sensor on the liquid line, okay? You can find your target subcooling up at the rating plate on the outdoor unit, all right? But that's not the case this time. This one is a piston or orifice chamber, all right? So we're gonna have to check the charge in superheat. All right, the next thing that you're gonna need is a superheat charging chart, all right? First thing you need, outdoor temperature, all right? You're gonna take that maybe six inches away from the outdoor condenser coil, okay? That's the entering air temp for the outdoor coil, okay? So it's just a normal temperature, all right? You're gonna take that in the shade, six inches away from the coil, make sure it's down low, not where the heat's pouring out at or rejecting out of the top of the unit, all right? Then you're gonna take the indoor wet bulb uh, temperature, okay? You can do that with a digital psychrometer, something that looks like this, okay? where you can take it with something that looks like this, all right? It's a sling psychrometer, all right? So once we have those two figures, the indoor wet bulb temp, which is gonna be taken at the largest return register, all right, and the outdoor temperature, we're gonna line them up in the chart, okay? So just say we had an outdoor temp of 70 degrees and an indoor wet bulb of 54 degrees, all right? Our actual target superheat that we want to charge the system to is seven degrees of superheat. Okay, so that's how that works. All right, we're at the largest return grill in the house. Okay, and we have our digital psychrometer. It says wet bulb right there. All right, and it says 62.6. All right, the top number is just that percent relative humidity on this particular one and the wet bulb, what we're looking for, what we're really interested in is 62.8, okay? All right, you could use your digital psychrometer, okay, or a sling psychrometer. All right, let's read that. Up at the top is the one we're looking for, and it says 63. All right, so we got 65 degrees as an entering air temp for the outdoor condenser fins or heat pump fins. All right, they're at, it's acting like a condenser right now because it's in AC mode. All right, so 65 degrees entering air temp. So we're gonna take our superheat charging chart. All right, we're gonna take the outdoor temperature of 65 degrees. All right, and then we're gonna take the indoor wet bulb temp of 62 to 64. All right, so we're gonna take 65 and follow it over until we have 21 to 24 degrees of target superheat needed. All right, so we'll say, we'll get the average of that 22.5, all right? 22.5 degrees of superheat is what we need. It's our target superheat. If we don't have enough superheat, if it's too low, okay? Our actual, if our actual uh, superheat is too low, then we're gonna need to take refrigerant out, all right? If our actual superheat, say, is 35 degrees, then we need to add refrigerant to get to the target superheat of 22.5. And remember that we're gonna to need to continually check this if we're adding a charge because the indoor wet bulb temp is going to lower as you're charging it. All right, you're gonna be taking the humidity out of the inside of the house. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and check the unit here. All right, we have an a uh, low side uh, pressure of 68 PSIG. Okay, we follow that into a saturated temperature of 40 degrees. That 40 degrees is a saturated temperature in the inside of the evaporator coil. All right, so we know that because it's the green one. All right, the green is a saturated temperature for R22, and this is a low side gauge. This is telling you what's happening 
at the indoor coil. All right. This is telling you what's happening at the outdoor condenser coil. All right. Green denotes R22, and that's what we're working on. So we know the actual evaporator has a saturated temperature of 40 degrees. By the time it comes out on the suction line and comes back to the unit, all right, we have 67 degrees. Okay. All right, 67 degrees. So that means that we have 27 degrees of superheat. And our actual target superheat is 22.5. So we can be within uh, plus or minus 3 degrees of that actual superheat. So if it's calling for, say, 22.5, I want to get it as close to that as possible. Or if anything, maybe get it to, say, 21 or something like that, but not lower than that. All right, so I would like to get it a little bit on the lower side, but we want to be right near 22.5. Presently, we have too much superheat. That means we need to add some refrigerant to this. All right. All right. Now, what's going to happen is when you add refrigerant to this thing, all right, this temperature right here, that temperature is going to end up going down. All right. And this saturated temperature, all right, that's going to end up going up. All right. So when they meet in the middle there, all right, they're going to start. This one's going to lower, this one's going to rise, and then you're going to get to the superheat that you're looking for. All right, so that's how you do it. Hope you enjoyed yourself, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.